Is 2024 a year where Ryan Day leads Ohio State to once again win the Big Ten Conference Championship? You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Football is king at Ohio State. Unfortunately, they haven't been the king to the conference for quite some time. However, I have a good feeling about what the Buckeyes might do in the Big Ten Conference in 2024. Welcome, in, Buckeye fans, to a Thursday edition of Locked on Buckeyes. Here on Thursday, February 15th in the year 2024, I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Simply visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Football is king in Columbus. That's one thing that is no surprise to you. It's no surprise to me. And new athletic director, Ross Bjork, who is going to take over when Gene Smith retires, he said in his introductory press conference, football is king. It's the truth. Unfortunately, the Buckeyes have not been the kings of the Big Ten for quite some time. But I got a good feeling that this could be a year for Ryan Day where the Buckeyes once again regain control of the conference and win the Big Ten Conference Championship game. And this year is going to be a whole lot harder to do that. And what the in the way that Ryan Day has set things up so far during the offseason, things are looking up and bright for the Buckeye football team. Think about this football team and what Ryan Day has done so far. And the question that you see there on the graphic there on the YouTube is, is 2024 Ryan Day's year? That's a big question. There's a lot that goes into that. There are 12 regular season games. There is a conference championship game. And then there are playoff games that will ultimately let us know if 2024 is going to be Ryan Day's year. It could be a good year for Day. It could be a bad year for Day. Ultimately, I'm thinking it's going to be more on the good side for Ryan Day, and it all starts by winning the Big Ten Conference Championship for the first time since 2020. That doesn't even sound right. That doesn't sit well with me, and I guarantee it doesn't sit well with you either. The way that Ohio State has been constructed and the talent that's been on the team and the games that they have played, you would have expected them to win. You would have expected things to be a little bit different. You would have expected, hey, we're good enough to beat Notre Dame on the road. That probably means you're good enough to win the Big Ten Conference Championship. No, no, no. Got to get there to win it. It haven't been there since 2020. This is one of those years, man, for Ryan Day, you can't mess around. Not at all. Especially when you take into account the team's that are now in the Big Ten Conference starting in 2024. It wouldn't shock me if down the road there are more teams that are added to the Big Ten Conference, maybe not for this upcoming season, but maybe for 2025 or 2026, 2027, 2028, and beyond. There could be a realistic opportunity for two, four, maybe six more teams to come to the conference before the powers that be in the sport decide, hey, this is getting out of hand. How about we break off from the NC2A and do our own thing? It could happen. I mean, they've been doing their own thing for years. NCAA doesn't really run the sport. However, they do hand down the punishment, which still is very, very odd. However, that's the way that has going for, that is going for the sport. You add in U- USC, UCLA, Oregon, and Washington. Now, UCLA is not expected to be any type of power in the upcoming season. They have Deshaun Foster, former UCLA Bruin, which I did not know that until uh, he was announced the new uh, head coach. Actually, I didn't even know he went to UCLA. Remember him when he was running the ball for the Carolina Panthers and scored in the uh, in the Super Bowl when he had that black, dark visor. I was like, oh, you cold. <laughs> you a cold back. They had no idea that was the same Deshaun Foster when he was announced the head coach of the UCLA Bruins. UCLA is coming in, not expected to be a factor. Washington has a new coach. Kalen DeBoer has gone to Alabama. They have a new quarterback because Michael Penix Jr. Eligibility, eligibility is up. He has gone to the NFL. Oregon and Dan Lanning and, um, oh, my goodness, I can't think of the coach's name. Lincoln Riley and USC. Those are two teams that Ohio State has to watch out for. 
every single year. But then you think about Michigan, and Sharon Moore taking over, but it seems like he gets promoted and everybody leaves. <laughs> Coaches gone, players in the portal, players going to the NFL. They have a lot of guys that got invited to the combine way more than I expected, which is still uh, an amazing feat for any team. But there, they, it also goes into what they have lost. Penn State, okay. Uh, do I think Wisconsin or Minnesota or Iowa will, will be a threat? No. Do I think any of the teams in the old Big Ten East will be a threat? Maryland? No. Uh, not at all. Like, it's still the Big Ten. But you added USC and Oregon. You add there's no divisions. You add, hey, the top two th- teams in the conference will get there. You also add in. Buckeyes haven't been there since 2020. You also add in. You've lost to your rival Thanksgiving weekend, the week before the conference championship game for the past three years. I'm not trying to bring up a sour, uh, a sour spot in our fandom. I'm just trying to provide the proper context for what's going to happen with this football team and the expectations that they have. These are not my ex- expectations. They are their own expectations to what, one, beat the team up north. Two, win a Big Ten Conference championship game. Three, win the national championship. Well, the second, the third one, it can happen now since you don't have to win the conference to really get a shot, be a, a solid shot in the playoff. You can win, you can not play in the conference championship game and still get in the playoff. It's still very weird that we're moving to a 12 team playoff format, which they say we're moving to it. It hasn't been confirmed yet. They haven't really satisfied and figured out how they're going to do things with the Pac-12 no longer being the conference. Y'all, it's February 15th. You would think these guys would have this ironed out by now, but they don't. They got a meeting coming up soon, so that may actually happen. But this should be a year for Ryan Day, a big year. And it all starts with Ryan Day leading the Buckeyes to win a Big Ten Conference championship game. Hey, for the first time since 2020. Now, here's the, here's the kicker. You got a lot of talent at running back. You got talent on the O-line, still one of those positions that needs to have a little bit more beef on it. It wouldn't shock me if the Buckeyes went out and got another offensive lineman in the second portal window that opens, I think, towards the end of spring practice. Defense is solid. Defense is fine. Do you trust Will Howard to be good enough to win the Big Ten this year? I, I don't. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that one. I really don't. I wish I did. I would feel more confident personally if Kyle McCord was here, but he's not here. So I can't go to discuss someone that is not in-house. I do think Will Howard's a good quarterback. I do think Will Howard can do some things. Do I think he's out of this out of this world? Uh, his talent is, is out of this world. And I think his talent is a future top 10 pick. No, I don't. But I also don't think you need that to win the conference this year or last year, or previously. I don't think that is something that needs to be a prerequisite for you to win the Big Ten Conference Championship. What I do believe, though, is that Ryan Day is preparing for this year to be a big one, not just for uh, himself as a coach, but for the team as a whole. His success is only going to come with the team's success, and he's done a phenomenal job so far, so far, building the team in the right way. Now, will the team that he's currently built be one of the best teams in the country on paper in the fall? Absolutely. They are right now. Does that mean they're going to go undefeated? No. What you see on paper does not always translate to the football field, which is making me more excited to watch this Buckeye football team during spring practice, in the spring game, during fall camp, but most importantly, during the upcoming 2024 college football season. Ryan Day could make this year a year to remember, and I'm going to tell you how next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets. Oh, I love getting buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Guys, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's so good, I got to read it again. New customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 simply if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. 
simply visit fanduel.com slash locked on. Once again, visit fanduel.com slash L O C K E D O N and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sports book partner of the NBA. I know many of you are looking out there and trying to find ways to connect with the show in a deeper way, but here's a simple way for you to accomplish your goal. Simply text 618, excuse me, 614-587-7853. Once again, that is 614-587-7853. That is the number to join the Locked on Buckeye subtext. There is some news that came out about Chris Holtman. He recently got fired. There is a show on your feed breaking down that uh, that firing. Well, the Subtexters, they got that info sent right to their phone even before the firing happened. I hear something or I see something, I will relay that to you so you know about what is going on. It's a simple way for you to connect with the show, Q&As, news, dose and analysis, all of that stuff is found right there. And when you sign up, there's a 14-day free trial. Simply text 614-587-7853 to sign up for the Locked on Buckeye subtext. One thing I want to sign up for is Ryan Day having a phenomenal and a career year in 2024. Absolutely. Yes, the Buckeyes winning makes my job easier. Absolutely. It doesn't mean my job is over, but it makes my job easier. I don't have to analyze and break down, hey, why did they lose here? Why did this player not do this? Why was he on the wrong shade? Why in the world did he have the wrong arm on this play? That stuff's going to happen every time. When you do it in a loss, sometimes it can be magnified and be a reason why things didn't go your way. But 2024 could be a big year for Ryan Day. He can make it a big year for himself. He's done a phenomenal job of it so far, but he has to continue what he's doing. He has to continue this path and the altered philosophy at Ohio State. It all starts with the portal. Part of it, not all of it, part of it starts with the portal. If there are guys you want that are available in the portal, go get them. Now, I'm not saying, guys, you want this because there are guys you want. What do we find? If you can get Julian Sand, the number one quarterback in the country in his recruiting class, go out there and get him. And you did. Now, some said he came out here and, and uh, transferred to Ohio State for Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien leaves, and then he signs a deal, and then he uh, – NIL deal with the – collect with no, the foundation, not the – yeah, the foundation. It's a collective. Let me get these words correct. Hey, man, looks like he's here for at least one year. Making some money as a, as a quarterback at Ohio State that won't play in the upcoming season, I would be really shocked if Julian Sand or Aaron Nolan threw a pass in 2024. I ain't saying step on the – do a pass, one pass. I don't think it's going to happen because you got Lincoln Keen holds Devin Brown and Will Howard above them. They may be more talented than the other uh, quarterbacks up there, but I don't think Ryan Day is going to play a true freshman when those guys are above them in that room. But a lot of this season is about Ryan Day. We look at the previous years at Ohio State. What have we seen by the Buckeyes? Sometimes they're not prepared. Sometimes the right guys are not on the field. Sometimes there are questionable calls that are made. Who does that go back to? Who does that fall on? Ryan Day. It's not unfortunate that it falls on Ryan Day. It comes with the responsibility of being the head football coach at Ohio State. If I'm the head football coach at any school, high school, middle school, college, NFL. If I'm the head coach anywhere at any level, there are things that are going to come back and be asked about me that maybe I didn't expect, but that's just the way things are when you are a head coach. Don't want to change it. Don't want to change your rules. It's just the way things go. And I personally believe that when it comes to this year for Ryan Day, Ryan Day is going to be on it. Because he currently is right now. Now, do I think the grind can be a little a little much at times? Absolutely. Think about the type of grind that we have to see from coaches in college consistently. Jay Wright is not coaching college basketball anymore. That's one name. I actually talked to a guy on Saturday before I was I went to the Maryland game, Maryland Ohio State double overtime. Really wouldn't want to say thriller. Wasn't really a lot of suspense, which is two teams that really aren't that good at basketball this year uh, playing a game. Evenly matched. Maryland's defense is good. Their offense is not that same way. You can't describe them the same. I talked to a guy who said, hey, I wish Ohio State hired Jerry Wright. And I'm sitting here like, now you know 
basketball is not king here, and they're not going to break the bank for Jay Wright. Jay Wright demands top dollar if he's going to entertain, if he's going to be your head basketball coach. Oh, Gene Smith, Gene Smith, no Ross Bjork. I doubt either one of them is going to break the bank for Jay Wright. Not at all. Now, there are other coaches out there. Um, well, well, there's definitely check out the other show in your feed in regards to Chris Holtman being fired. It was bound to happen at some point. Didn't think it was going to happen in season, but I'll dive in more into that on the show that's in your feed, the emergency pod, reaction pod to Chris Holtman being fired. This year is setting up for Ryan Day to make it one that is memorable. But he has to do a lot of things possibly different than he had before. Is he going to continue to want to evolve as a coach? Is he going to continue to want to do the things that might not be the norm but are the right things for the team? Like, Jordan Shrug saw a kid do that over the weekend. I was really happy to see him. Uh, after he hit his third three in the second quarter, he said he hit the Jordan Shrug, looked at his boys. They all started laughing and stuff. And uh, – Talked to him after the game. I said, hey, man, good shooting. I admit, I should have asked, hey, man, that shrug. I, I, I enjoyed that. I, I, and that should be maybe Ryan Day at some point, like, just hitting the, the Jordan shrug, like, what can I tell you? It, it worked. I had a plan. It wouldn't it have wouldn't action. And the rest is history. And I'm hoping that history is a, is a national championship win. I mean, the first one since 2014 would be phenomenal for this Buckeye football team. And I do think with the grind – that Ryan Day has had so far at Ohio State and the tenure, the success, sometimes the failures, I think it'll make a national championship during the upcoming season mean a whole lot more than it are, than it's already going to. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm not here to make a prediction. I said it last year. I had Jeff Hunt on the show. We discussed it, what separates Ohio State from Georgia, and we went through a list of things and dove into different topics and different ideas as far as why there's a gap between Georgia and Ohio State. And you're saying, Jay, Georgia didn't make the playoff. I don't care. I still think they're one of the best teams in the country, and I still think if they played Michigan, they would have beaten the Michigan Wolverines. That's not me being a hater. There are people out there around the sport that cover this at a national level that still would have believed last year Michigan would have lost to Georgia if they played. I'm one of them. I'm not going to shy away from it. I am one of them. I am also someone that believes Ryan Dick can make this year a big year if he stays on this path that he is currently on in the offseason with the shifted philosophy and him continue, continuing to evolve and to become, not become, to be a better coach. It'll be hard. It'll be very, very hard because we all know it's hard to teach an old dog do tricks. Ryan Day is trying to do that right now. And let's just see what happens. If they teach teach an old dog new tricks and those new tricks lead to championships, lead to trophies coming back to Ohio State, that would be amazing. It would also be amazing if Ryan Day had the right coaches on staff. I'm not here to say that he does it. We're going to ask a question to speculate if he does next on Locked on Buckeye. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and the best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. And even an hour after it starts, it's a place to find last-minute seats. With zone deals, you pick the same the section, excuse me, you pick the section and game time picks the seats for big time savings. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Terms apply. Just download the game time app and use code Vegas100 for $100 off a big game Ticket, download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. This episode is also brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in central Ohio. 
And guys, check this out. Billiards Plus has grills that have up to 30-year warranties. That's right, a grill with a 30-year warranty. Everything you need for in-home and backyard entertainment is at Billiards Plus. And the grills, whether you like charcoal, like yours truly, or gas or wood-fired, Billiards Plus has a perfect setup for all grillers. They are family-owned and operated. And when you talk to the staff at Billiards Plus, you know you're talking to an expert who won't steer you wrong. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and even outdoor entertainment needs. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole entire staff will always go above and beyond to give you the best customer service in the industry. Billiards Plus, visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on the YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app found only a part of, excuse me, the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Do you think Ohio State has the right coaches on staff currently for the team to make all the noise in the upcoming season? And I say all the noise. There could be positive noise. There could be negative noise. We're looking for the positive noise. Because if there is negative noise that is made in the upcoming season, uh, more coaches might get fired. One of them being Ryan Day. Now, I'm not thinking Ryan Day is going to get fired. Um, he hasn't done anything so far to be fired. G. Smith is going out. G. Smith backs Ryan Day. Ross Bjork, I do believe, backs Ryan Day. So I don't think Ryan Day in his current state is looking at potentially getting fired with the way things have gone so far. Now, if you lose to Michigan four years in a row, like, yeah, Ross Bjork comes in from Texas A&M and College Station and says, hey, buddy, you're a good human being. We like a lot of the things you do for the community. But we're not really ha we're not happy with the results of the football program. Eh, wrong, you're out. Now, currently, when I look at the offensive and defensive coaching staffs, Hardline satisfied. Chip Kelly can't really mess that up right now, so satisfied. Uh, Justin Fry is one of them that has to, has to, has to show improvement with the player that he puts on the field. Because he could be up out of town, too. Tony Alford's fine. Tony Alford's one of those coaches at Ohio State that we look at him. You're saying, well, what has he done? How has his unit performed? They've been hurt for two years in a row. Trevian Henderson, Mayan Williams, Evan Pryor. Hurt to a point that a year ago against Michigan, a true freshman in Dallin Hayden got the start. Why? Because the team was battered and bruised. And what did he do when he was on the field? Play phenomenal football. Phenomenal football and did it phenomenal, phenomenally. I don't know exactly why he didn't get more playing time this year. Because when he played as a true freshman, the things I heard that he didn't do well, he, he did them well on the football field. So I don't know if people be out there watching when it comes to Down Hayden. Hey, I, this ain't the place to know Tony out for scrutiny or a criticism. Uh, in a negative way, no, 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 no. This ain't what we're here for. What we are here for is Tony Alford to be the RB coach at Ohio State. If he wants to be, if he eventually wants to be an OC and whatever coach is here says, hey, you can be the OC, so be it. As it stands right now, he is fine. Uh, linebackers, I am not sold that Jim Knowles needs to be the defensive coordinator and the LB coach. I am not. I am not because year one of the Jim Knowles, we got to see a lot of aggressive play by the linebackers. Year two of the Jim Knowles, an aggressive play was not, was not the same, and it was clear. The linebackers were the weakest link on the defense. Larry Johnson's unit up front is full of studs, man, full of dudes. But you still want to see more from this unit, which is it's still in question, like, what does Ohio State need to do to help Larry Johnson in the upcoming season? Is it internally uh, shifting some things and altering how things are going? Maybe. Is it Larry Johnson shifting, shifting some things personally? Maybe. Is it the players? Probably. There are so many angles to this topic. But Larry Johnson is one of those that, hey, man, something has to get better. Tim Walton at corner, fine. 
Matt Guerrero hadn't been here long enough, only had a cup of coffee in Columbus, hadn't been here long enough for me to have a definitive statement about what he is as a coach. But the coaches that are there, Jim Knowles, does he need to be an LB coach and D coordinator? I would probably say no. Is James Laronitis the answer? Here is you know, interviewing with the NFL team. I don't know. Like, there are so many things I don't know, and I have no problem saying I don't have the answer to that. I do have the answer to one thing, though. Coaching staff put together pretty well. There's one spot left. I don't think I would use it for a special teams coordinator. That's possible. I think I would use it for defense. Bring in an established, well-respected linebackers coach. You let Chip Kelly run the offense and be QB coach. Who is the quarterback? Is he run the leader of the offense? So that makes sense. Yeah, it would make sense for Jim Knowles to lead the linebackers, who is a leader of the defense. However, we need better results, buddy. And sometimes hiring somebody to relieve somebody of certain duties while they're coaching is a good great way for the team to be better in the upcoming season. Out of here on a Thursday. One more day left. Try to get our guy, Brian Smith, Locked On's recruiting analyst, back on the show tomorrow. Talk about Fahim Delane, uh, a player that is a safety one. I think it's top 30 players in the country. I know for sure top 50. And the Buckeyes are favored to get a commitment from this young man. We're going to learn all about him later on, maybe tomorrow, with Brian Smith. You can follow me on X at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. This has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Thursday. We'll see you next time.